What up, my fellow Knicks fans? This is your guy, Marcellus Ease, and don't panic quite yet. Now, in the second part of my series for the Knicks and Cavs playoff preview, we'll take a look at their second matchup in which the Knicks were on a home back-to-back -back, and the Cavs had two days off previously. Now, in this matchup, the Knicks completely out-rebounded the Cavs on the offensive boards, in which it created almost double the second-chance points opportunities for our Knicks, which led into five guys being over double figures, and the Cavs' injuries for this game is no Jerry Allen, no Dean Wade, and no Ricky Rubio. And if you guys remember in our first matchup, Dean Wade did go off as he was 6 of 8 from 3-point range. And in this series, I will introduce a new dynamic heading into our playoff series, which is Darius Garland, as he made his debut this season against the Knicks in this matchup. And he will be a key figure that the Knicks, definitely in our playoff series, can get our guys matched up against on the offensive end to take advantage of. But I'm not going to say no more. Let's just get into it. See, as you can see, the more you fuck around, the more you're going to find out. And also, if you stay down here and you never fuck around, you'll never find out. So Darius Garland brings a different dynamic to the Cavs versus the first matchup with the Knicks, as we're going to see here. Now with Garland, look when he attacks this lane, he's going to make it look like he's going to do a floater and then he's going to convert that into a pass. That's what he normally does. He does like these fake shot passes. When I say shot passes, I almost combine the word. It's a it's a shot pass. So he makes it look like he's going to shoot it, but he really ends up passing it. Catches Brunson off guard. We're going to take a look at that one more time. It's actually a genius thing that he does here. So once again, unlike the first matchup, Garland brings up the ball. Mitchell gives him a little, you know, screen pass. And then look at Brunson. The reason why he did that, his shot pass comes uh, into play perfect because it kind of throws Brunson off. Brunson is going to try to be that guy right here in the middle to kind of deter his shot. But the whole time, this little shot pass fake thing that he does is really to get Stevenson open. See, he got he got Brunson to bite. But once again, the Cavs don't have shooters, so you already know how this ends up. It's a brick. But just giving you an insight to little habits that Garland likes to do. He does these floater passes, shot passes, all these little kinds of fakes to kind of throw guys off and get his teammates open. Now, continue on looking at Darius Garland's profile. You're going to see that he's really a stop-and-go, herky-jerky type of guy. See that step right there? He stopped for a second, and that's how he catches you, and then he speeds up. He clearly caught Grimes right here, was able to draw the foul. But this is his game, pretty much. He's not really a guy that could blow past guys. He he has a really good stutter step. He'll, he'll hit you with a couple of fake-outs. It's just, that's that's overall his game. Can't get all, caught on that, especially off the pick and roll right there. That was a fake right there. I'm not sure if you guys caught it. I'll play it one more time for you. You're going to see it right here. Right here. He's going to make the move right here. Right there. He slowed down. Off the pick, he slows down. And then he does, he kind of... Gradually does his little speed with the slowdown, and then he accelerates. That's all he does off these pick and rolls. Sometimes he, he'll he slow down right here just to see what Mitchell Robinson is going to do. Either he's going to commit to him, or he's going to sag off Mobley, or he's going to commit to him too much where he gets like an open lane to make a bounce pass to Mobley. But the fact that he's just going downhill, he doesn't see an open, an open opportunity for Mobley. gonna do it one more time you're gonna see him put on right there herky jerky he stops and goes that's pretty much his game he's not gonna blow past anybody all right so once again Darius garland this guy loves the fake out look at his head look where he's looking at he's looking right here to kevin love but look where he makes the pass at. He's really good at this. Not even his own man expects it. See Osman? The Osman does not expect the pass at all. 
because he was never looking at him. So he's good at the look off. See? <laughs> Completely caught him off guard. We'll, we'll, we'll put that in, in full speed right now. But this is Garland's game, man. He does not attack the hoop. He'll hit you with herky-jerky moves. And he'll hit you with the, I'm, I'm doing a floater, but it's really a pass. Or I'm doing a jump pass, but it's really a floater. Really good at looking off the defenders, man. Really good at that. But this is Garland's profile. But one thing about Garland, he does not attack the hoop enough. He does not attack the hoop enough. And him not attacking the hoop, it's kind of... It kind of stops him from averaging actually more points because he's a 90% free throw shooter. So the, it'll be a Knicks job in, the, in these playoffs to keep him off that line. So once again right here, you're going to see Darius Garland pretend like he's going to shoot. But look, it's really a bounce pass. Great anticipation. Great anticipation. Let's look at that one more time. Like I say, he has this sort of stop-and-go, kind of herky-jerky type game. Now, the Knicks, knowing the fact that the Cavs are really relying on Garland and Donovan Mitchell to keep them in these games because their bench provides no scoring, look how the Knicks could play defense on preventing Garland from getting his buckets. Quickly plays lovely defense against Garland. And a fact about Garland is that he does not like to drive and shoot a lot of free throws. He, he, he rarely takes the ball to the rack. But he's like a 90% free throw shooter. But less than like 10 to 15% of his scoring comes from him actually driving in this lane. So they're going to take advantage of that. It's something we could definitely do in the playoffs. We could quickly stays on him, forcing him to go to Hartenstein. But remember, Garland does not attack the hoop at all. So he's not going up against 7-foot Hartenstein. And you're going to see the shot that he settles for, especially with this trash-ass bench. Look at all these open shooters. Curl. Um, what's his name? Karis Levert. And this is their forward right here. He's not really a threat. I don't know why he's even standing here. He's not a threat for three-point range. Look. Takes a sideways shot. Now, in this whole matchup, this is the first time I've seen Darius Garland actually attack the hoop. And the Knicks should definitely try to force him to do so because he does not like doing that. No, he's not making it on Hartenstein. <laughs> Not even close. Let's look at that again. <coughs> Let's look at that. Tries his best, the herky-jerky stuff. He's not quite the finisher, but it's crazy because once again, if he just attacked the hoop more, he would average a lot more points. This guy is a 90% free throw shooter. Like, why not attack the hoop more? So right here, you begin to see some of the characteristics Darius Garland has, especially off that pick and roll. He loves to run pick and roll with Jared Allen, but Jared Allen's out, obviously, in this game. He goes against the pick, and watch. He's going to slow down right here. He's going to wait. Knowing that Mitch made the commitment right here, he's going to wait for Mobley to roll. He's really he, he does this all the time. Changes the pace. And Mobley draws the foul. Let's take a look at it one more time. He's going to wait for the pick. He's going to go up against the pick. Slows down. He does this all the time. And sometimes he does like a... He pretends like he's going to do a floater. But then he really passes it for alley hoop. Or if the alley hoop isn't there, he goes for the floater. And he's really good with these floaters too. So Darius Garland right here tries his little sneaky floater. As you can see off the pick, he slows down. He always does that. He slows down because he's waiting for Mobley to make us either get open or make some sort of move. Or he tries to fill it out to see which way Mitch is going. As the Knicks off the, this type of pick and roll, they love to play drop back defense. So RJ could recover and get back to Garland. So you're going to see Mitch defend this actually perfect. He's still in the way of Mobley right here i mean i wish he could keep his hands up though but he leaves enough space where garland could think he can get an open little floater but i think not says mitch all right so Darius garland he's a good mid-range shooter but this is where he thrives at once he has an open three 
He's like a 40% shooter from that. He's going to knock these down. Him off the dribble from three-point range, probably knock him down not as quite as high, but he's a good three-point shooter when he's wide open. But he really kills you from the mid-range and with his floaters. So out here, this is his area right here. Especially when he does the floaters right here. But he's a pretty efficient scorer. Very efficient scorer, especially uh, the last few seasons. It's only on the defensive end. He's real, real bad. Sometimes his scoring does not make up for his ability to not score. It's just sometimes his defensive ability doesn't make up for his uh, his good scoring ability. It's just he's given up way too much. And you, and you include his turnovers. He's very turnover prone since he loves jumping in the air as he makes his passes. Once again, leaving Darius Garden wide open for three is not what we want. He's going to be wide open right here. He can knock these down. He's a 40% shooter, especially with the with the knockdown shots. Too easy for him. Okay, so one thing right here, Darius Garland, once you get him up in the air, he's turnover prone. Once he tries to make these passes while he's in the air, it's almost a guaranteed turnover. He does it all the time. He makes some genius passes, but at times he tries so hard with the fake out, the no look. But once you get him jumping in the air and he's on that no look trying to make a pass you can get the you can get him to turn the ball over he does this all the time that's why in this matchup he finished with the worst plus minus out of anybody on the court let's look at that let's look at that one more time he's definitely not going to the hoop he's not a person that attacks the hoop he tries to make a pass while in the air, but Hartenstein deflects it. But once again, even though it didn't happen in this play, once we get this guy jumping in the air to make a pass, this is what, what we want him to do because he's very turnover prone. He had four turnovers in this game. And once again, he finished with the worst plus minus out of anyone on the court in this game. Minus 17. So he's definitely someone the Knicks need to focus on the weaknesses and some of the stuff that he does well, we need to focus on him because I believe he is the weak point of this team. And especially due to the fact that the intensity is going to be different and it's the first time he's going to be seeing this type of intensity and speed. All right, so this is the matchup we want right here. Mono e mono right here. In the playoffs, we need Brunson, mono e mono with Garland. This is going to be what we need to attack to get our guards to get their points up. Garland is a little bit too small. And Brunson, you know, he's more girthy. He's much more bigger, could take advantage of Garland as he's not that strong defending. So Darius Garland is not really a guy that's really good at moving laterally and recovering off of screens. As you're gonna see right here, it doesn't really take that much for quickly to beat him off the dribble. This, he never recovers that well. Let's take a look at it one more time. Look at that, trailing him the whole time. He's going to be the key guy that Knicks have to attack on the offensive end. They're going to have to draw up screens to get Brunson to match up with him one-on-one -on -one and quickly. And even guys like RJ. Now in this inbound play right here, pay attention to Darius Garland. He's right here. He's going to be the weak link in this whole play. Garland is still right here. Watch Grimes. Grimes is going to catch him lacking. Like I said, he's not good at recovering at all. He's going to be the guy that the Knicks definitely have to pick at during the playoffs. You can take a look at that one more time. He gets caught completely lacking. Yeah, he's definitely the guy we're definitely going to be picking on during the playoffs. We got to get pick and rolls to get Brunson one-on-one -on -one with this guy, to get quickly one-on-one -on -one with him. Even Josh Hart to back him up, bring him down in the post, post him up, and get that ball in that hoop. Now, when the shot is not falling for Donovan Mitchell, he kind of gets in this funk. But this is great defense by Quentin Grimes. But Donovan Mitchell, when the three-point shot especially is not falling for him, his game kind of gets tight, and you start to see it right here. This is great defense by Grimes. Good switch by Mitchell, switching 
direction, but he kind of gets tight because guys kind of press him a little bit tighter as far as guarding him. They don't give him as much space, you know, trying to tell him to come inside the paint. Great defense by Grimes right there. But Mitchell gets tight, man. It's, it's weird. He gets real tight when his shot, his three-point shot isn't falling. Well, it's going to be interesting to see how Tibbs mixes and matches Josh Hart, Quentin Grimes, and quickly on Donovan Mitchell. Yeah, let's just see this one more time play out. Okay, Mitchell trying to shake him. I think Grimes knows right here Mitchell isn't going for the three. It has just not been falling. And Mitchell just runs into traffic. Yeah, his game starts to get limited when you know that three-point shot is not going to fall. Wow. Right here, look at great defense by Quentin Grimes. Hands up, active, feet moving. Nope. One more time right there. Tries to step back. Stand. Oh, up straight. Beautiful. Good shit by Quentin Grimes right here. Stands up straight at the end of this. Good Mitchell. Genius at changing direction. Ooh, tries to step back. And, and then look at look at Grimes, man. Straight. Not, not, not baiting him. Not baiting me at all today, boy. Woo! Good shit by Grimes. I got to see quick on Mitchell. Now, Donovan Mitchell is such a threat. I don't know in this play whether the Cavs have just been breaking it too much, but look at quickly call for like a double team. Look how many players are on the Knicks are on uh are on Donovan Mitchell, man. One, two. Do that correct two. It's like a three, but three. Three players on him. <laughs> and you know, Donovan Mitchell, because he draws so much attention and he could pull up from all out here. He gets his guys open easily, but everybody else is breaking. This guy can't shoot. And of course, Karis LeVert can't shoot. Stevenson can't shoot either. So Osman is the only real shooter, but the Knicks are, I don't know if in this play, they're just leaving them open, but Mitchell on the regular, he draws this type of attention. It's an easy setup for Osman for the three. That's about time they made a shot. Let I me mean, look at the score. <laughs> Hey, look at this score. This Cavs bench, you know, this is a problem Mitchell has with this team. He has to come back off a of rest to put on a Superman show. Of course, we already know Donovan Mitchell is nasty with the dribbling, but look how he goes against the screen. So there's a screen on Grimes' left side, and he's going to use, he's going to actually bait Grimes and kind of test out which direction his momentum is taking him. See, that's a test out right there. And then he acts like he's going to go for the screen, and he uses Grimes' momentum against him right here. Mitchell loves going. If the screen came on this side, he would somehow try to get you to make you think that he's going on the, the side where the screen's coming, but he'll go on the opposite side. That's what he does. Nice her jerky move. And he gets to the lane wide open. Once again, Donovan Mitchell draws so much attention. You know, he's going to catch Randall sleeping right here. Randall's going to be sleeping. Now he, now he wakes up. Mitchell draws a lot of attention off these screens. Now, Darius Garland is not the only weak defender on the Cavs. As Donovan Mitchell also, right here, you're going to pay attention to him. He's also some of the weaker points in the Cavs' defense. As Brunson easily going to get by him with this move. It doesn't even take that much. Look at that. Brunson quickly gets by him and gets the and one. Having two six one guards, it's going to be interesting to see how the Knicks take advantage of that in the playoffs. Once again, the matchup we've all been waiting for, just like last year in the playoffs. Mitchell one on one with Brunson. You're going to see how easily one little move shakes off, shakes off Mitchell right there. Look at that step back. Look at all that space that shit created. Woo! I'm telling you. Mitchell is definitely one of the weaker points, just like Garland, for the Cavs on the defensive end. Let's take a look at that one more time. Mono e mono. Mitchell off the screen. Does a good job going under the screen. But Brunts is smart enough to use that momentum against him right there. There's a spacing. And that's enough time 
for Brunson. It's crazy how Bun Brunson and Mitchell have the same skill set offensively. They can both do the step back. They can do catch and shoot. They can actually go over a screen and just straight up pull up from three. They all have the same skill sets. It's, this is this series is going to be very, very interesting. And I'm pretty sure Mitchell wants to get revenge on Brunson because Brunson showed out on him last year. For sure. Now, in this playoff series, is going to be very important for the Knicks not to have costly turnovers against the Cavs bench. This is really some of the only ways that they can get points is off of these tr turnovers, these transition points off of turnovers. Knicks got to make sure they do not give up these type of points to the Cavs bench. Because right now, they don't have anyone on the floor that can really generate something. Garland's going to try to create for these guys. They're mixing the starters of Garland and Mobley on the floor with the bench players. Was it Osman, Kevin Love, which is not there anymore, and Karis LeVert. So, I mean, you look at Kevin Love, we could swap him out for Isaac Okoro, which is he's a way, 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 way worse shooter than uh, Kevin Love right here. So when you turn the ball over like this, you cannot give this bench who cannot score these cheap points. This is going to be very, very important. OK, so in this matchup, even though this play right here, Lamar Stevens, even though he's in the starting lineup, he's normally their bench player because Isaac Okoro is supposed to be starting for them, but he's out. But this guy right here, this is how on the bench they're going to get some of their points when they insert guys like this. He's a, kind of like a strong defensive player. But this is how really the, he's, he's going to get his points through these like little mismatches. He just took advantage of Brunson right there being small. But for the most part, these guys, this is this is pretty much his player archetype. Yeah, so him and Raul Nato, they're pretty much going to be getting these little cheap points. Just trying to kind of get a mismatch and pick and roll twos. But for the most part, they don't have any shooters like that off the bench. Now, with the Cavs bench, when there's no threat of a three-point shooter and nothing is falling at the moment, they have nothing to do. The offense is completely stagnant. As even Kevin Love in this game right here, the shot is not falling. And you're going to see Darius Garland. He's kind of in this lineup right now from preventing the bench to totally becoming a non-factor offensively. He's there to at least create something. But as you're going to see, he has nothing. He fakes the shot. Like I tell you, he loves that shot pass. And he has only Isaac Okoro. And this is Isaac Okoro's spot right here and right here. And he still bricks it. But their offense is just stagnant without, without anybody from that starting lineup. And this is this is one of the key factors that's going to kind of hold this team back because they really rely on Garland and Mitchell to kind of put this team on their back and drop at least 50 points between them every single night just for them to be in these games so right here you see how bad the Cavs bench is because they quickly call timeout to prevent the Knicks from continuing their run and this is how this team in a way is just kind of hindered by their bench there's not much they can do their bench is just there's just nothing happening and the Knicks just keep on scoring all right you fellas take a look at Karis LeVert right here man he looks uncomfortable shooting this three just the whole sequence of his motion, just from the whole pull-up, it just, it looks off. He looks uncomfortable. That's a lot of space right there. He looks uncomfortable shooting that. <laughs> I mean, this Cavs bench is really bad. They're probably going to have to go all defense against the Knicks. Look at his motion. He just looks, his windup was extra slow. He's still, it was still short. Now, Evan Mobley, once again, he's very disciplined. When defending right in the paint, very disciplined. Doesn't foul Randall. Contests the shot. He's really good at this. I'm just gonna take a look at the replay again. One more time. Stays with Randall. Does not foul. He does not lead the league in blocks, but he does contest a lot of shots. And he does not foul at all. On this play right here, look look where Evan Mobley catches this pass. This is what I mean. This guy, <laughs> this guy, when he blocks people, he tends to snag the ball from the air. You know, Mitchell Robinson, when he tends to get, get a block, he tends to swat it. But Mobley tends to get the possession. But once again, 
even offensively, guys can't block him because he's so high in the air. He's only six foot eleven. Mitchell's seven feet, but he elevates so high. I mean, half the time when he does his hook shot, it's almost like he's throwing the ball into the hoop downwards. But this is something that I just I thought I'd point out because you guys are gonna end up seeing this from Evan Mobley in the playoffs. Now it's really unusual, but Evan Mobley loves to push the pace. He loves to push the pace, and he's gonna go mono e mono with with Mitchell Robinson right here. Once again, I told you that elevated touch. Too easy. He has nice touch, nice finishing ability. So overall, in the second matchup between the Knicks and the Cavs, Donovan Mitchell's three-point shot was not falling, which made his game very predictable with him attacking the lane. And also Darius Garland, he didn't really have an efficient game, especially on the defensive end. And due to the fact that he does not get to the free throw line enough, I mean, my fellow Knicks fans, just understand his player archetype. The fact that he does not attack the line and he shoots about 90% from the free throw line is crazy. So in a way, he is kind of predictable, but he does have a herky-jerky type of game where he stops and goes, he doesn't blow past guys, and he sort of does these no-look passes. That's pretty much his game, but make no mistake about it, he is an efficient offensive scorer, especially... It's only his first couple years into the league, but he is about to see a new intensity in these playoffs. And I'm wondering how his game is going to translate. So it is what it is. You guys stay tuned for part three.